All right. Welcome back to the Gentleman's Bureau, everybody. And today we have a special guest, Lane of Alaska. I believe he's on the Kenai Peninsula. That's where Pop I'm at. <laughs> yeah. So we have the Lane Lane connection. We got two lanes on. Uh, like always, we have Jed on. And uh, yep, I'm coming to you from Japan. So before we uh, just ramble, let's dive right into it. <clears throat> before we l ramble, let's roll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like that. So, uh, <clears throat> Lane, what's the weather what like up? over there? What's the weather like over there? Well, currently the weather is sunshiny. It's snowy, and uh, I'm not exactly sure what the temperature is outside right now, but it was around 20 below last night. It was cold. No oh, shit. Fahrenheit. Is that typical, or around this time, or? Yeah, I mean, March gets pretty cold, you know. February and March are definitely months that I'd rather not be an Alaskan resident. But, you know, it's it's the, the way I say it to people is in the summertime, we get these days that are so phenomenal that it makes up for the completely shit weather that we have to endure. And and that's 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 what I live for. Just those those epic summer days you know because the sun doesn't yeah. go down here so it's, it's rad yeah, i was gonna ask about that how long how long how long of a daylight period do you guys have well like height? i'm not exactly sure what the you know set hours is but it's so bright all the time it doesn't get dark <laughs> so so like you can go on a walk down the street and the street lights they don't come on you know like in, in the in the middle of july you just I mean, it's bright everywhere. You can go walk through the woods. You can walk down the road. You can, I mean, everybody's out. People are fishing on the river. It, it's really cool. I mean, it's the, it's the land of the midnight sun. It's, it's, it's just, I mean, it's always, it's always sunny in the summertime unless it's raining. So. Hmm. It's pretty crazy. So like you can't necessarily see the sun in the sky, but it's high enough that it's still lighting everything up is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. In okay. Barrow, well, there's another name for it. You, you tactic. I, I can't, I, I can't think of it off the top of my head right now. But they, they, they changed the name. It used to be called Barrow, and it's the, I, I believe it's the northernmost part of Alaska. Up there, they get 30 days of sun. I mean, it's up there 30 days. It just, just so it does circles. Yeah. Barrow. Shit. That's where the, uh, the oil is, right? That big oil yeah. spot. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. There's a lot of oil field that goes on in the in the North Slope. Um, you know, there's a lot of federal land up there that they. I mean, they got the Federal Reserve is huge, but there's enough that they allow the Federal Reserve. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's interesting if you really want to look it up. Look how much land is owned by the federal government in Alaska. I mean, it, it it's in the ninety percent range. Oh, it, it's it's. Oh, it's crazy, dude. It's crazy. There's wow. less than 750,000 people that live in Alaska, and the government right. owns more than 90% of the land up here. Hmm. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you know where all the rockets are that, you know, are, are not in the tundra? There's no big silos full of nukes out in the tundra in Alaska. I can't, but, I can't talk about that, but you can go ahead and talk what you think. <laughs> No, no, I'm not going to say anything more, but th there's a lot of stuff that goes on up here because there's no people. I mean, yeah. you, you go on a plane ride and get crash landed out in the tundra and you're not going to see anybody for thousands of miles. Well, hundreds of miles. I mean, it, it's just crazy, dude. Yeah, I bet. Damn. Um, <laughs> is there like so like you know growing up there was always like movies like you know balto and, and chili dogs and their stuff is there still like a strong um sled dog tradition up there well yeah the iditarod's going on right now um oh, shit. Is it? when i want yeah you oh, google yeah. the iditarod 2020 it's happening right now actually i believe one of the mushers just got COVID 19 you know what i mean that <laughs> while that he was on, like, been going around <laughs> while he was on the fucking i <laughs> I did a ride. Like, yeah. 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 How does that happen? This just, yeah. this just in, Musher 1927 contracted COVID under suspicious circumstances. Jeez. Dog blew yeah, a fucking somehow. fart and it had COVID in it. I probably no. made, a, made a pit stop at the 
brothel, you know, <laughs> out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> but all like 60 plus residents of that town got tested, got tested. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, I believe the news and the media like to say what they want to say to get reactions that they want to get so that they can get paid by the people that want to see those reactions out of us. Ratings so fuck those people. And narrative. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, ratings and narrative. Yep. yep. 100%. Jeez. Alaska is like the the last frontier, right? Like really. Yep. And it, so do you think of yourself as like a modern woodsman and like a like a last frontiersman kind of thing? So the way that I would <clears throat> portray myself is I'm not a native Alaskan. I wasn't here hundreds of years ago and my family wasn't here hundreds of years ago. All right. And, you know, that's how people on the earth, we all go around. We all live here and there and, and everywhere. I was born here and my father was born here as well. And so I feel like this is my home. This is all that I know. And I might be a white guy that lives in Alaska in more of an urban part of Alaska. But I did spend nine years of my childhood in Bethel, Alaska, which is 500 miles west of Anchorage. And uh, if you Google Bethel, Alaska, they consider Bethel a third world country with a zip code. Jesus. Yep. Bethel, Alaska's got the nation's largest open sewer lagoon. Oh my God. <laughs> it's also only three feet above sea level. <laughs> there you go. You want to know how they clean out that lagoon? One of those like uh, pool scum things? No, they like flood net it things? and the tundra eats it. Oh my God. Oh my God. I bet that smells wonderful. You want to talk about it? Oh, dude. Yeah. And they also have a, like, there's like a hundred foot flood level. So all the buildings have to be built at a certain level and there's no foundations in Bethel. Everything's on pillars, right? They just built a $3 billion hospital out there and it cost $8 million just for the foundation. Cause they had to go through like 500 feet of ice to get to bedrock to, to build a foundation for a building that big. Think about that. I mean, it's, it's crazy. So I mean, just the way of life in Bethel is completely different. And now it's all modernized. Back in the 90s, it was like living there in the 70s. And so yeah. it's just, it's come a long ways. But yeah, I'd consider myself an Alaskan. Damn right. I mean, that was, this is my home. I was born here. And there's not a lot of Americans that are Alaskans. And we're a different breed. You know what I mean? People leave America to get away from bad shit and they come to Alaska because. There's 60,000 yeah. people that live on my peninsula. And I like that. Shit. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Think of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're, uh, you're in a great spot, man, whether you know it or not. I mean, as far as I think you guys are going through a recession in your state just because of like the oil and shit. Like, uh, I don't know if you've been keeping up with, I mean, I'm sure, sure you have because like you guys are mainly based on oil and fishing, right? That's like, uh, yeah. So there's oil, fishing, um, cool. There's drugs. That's a that's an income. Therapy. There's a lot of drug use in Alaska. No, but there's there's seriously there's oil, tourism, fishing, and uh, the marijuana industry is blown up here. I mean, it's oh, it's really yeah. taken off. I don't. That's why it's legal numbers. there, isn't it? It is. Yes. Yeah, for recreational and medical use. <laughs> Fuck Freedom. <laughs> yeah, and Freedom. you can grow three plants started vegging and three plants uh, budding legally. Oh. No kidding. So they have like actual during the plant's life span, like you know what I mean? Like they actually have it limited. Well, when you so shit. when you grow marijuana, whether you get a clone or you plant it, it grows, okay? And then you change the light cycle and that allows it to go from vegetating to budding to where it makes the flower. Right. Yeah. So that's where the law says, you know, you can have Three of them going to the flower. You can have three of them started. They don't, I mean, I could have a 14 foot plant going in flower. That's legal. But yeah, but yeah, here, here in Denver, oh, go ahead. Oh, you can only have one ounce in your house, though. Hmm. What if I grow a plant uh, with three pounds on it? You know what yeah, I mean? Like, better sense, smoke yeah. fast. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Jesus girl Christ. Girl party. Hey, guys. Did, um, yeah, but uh, here in Denver, like, you can grow up to 12, I think. The last time I checked on the law, is you can grow up to Jesus. 12. And, uh, yeah, they get a bunch of complaints, like, neighbors. 
are always calling the cops on people, but it's like, what are you going to do? Like, it's 12 plants. Like, okay, you, they can't base it on the smell of odor because 12 plants is going to produce so much odor. So it's like, what are you going to do? You know what I mean? So a lot of people, they'll come. Don't be a dumbass. Get a carpet yeah. filter. <laughs> the, problem, the problem they're having is uh, a lot of people out of state, they'll come to Colorado, uh, specifically Denver. They'll <clears throat> They'll grow. And then they'll just ship it back to their state, which, I mean, if I was a shady motherfucker, hell yeah, I'd do that. 12 plants, what are you going to do? You know what I mean? So, um, so it's just interesting. interesting. Um, when I got sober, I moved to Greeley, Colorado, and okay. I, spent a, I spent a winter living in Greeley, Colorado. I worked at Fonta's Pizza. So if you're ever in, in Greeley, Colorado, you need to go check out Fonta's Pizza. They're awesome. Okay. But, uh, oh, let's see. I went to the Dispo there, and... They would not sell me seeds. Uh, just why? Because you were out of state, right? Yep. I yes. had an Alaskan license. I was not allowed to purchase marijuana seeds legally. I could get as much weed. Well, not as much weed. I could get the legal amount of pot, but couldn't get any kind of cultivation stuff from them. So I found that interesting. Huh. Wow. Crazy. I get that. <laughs> that must have been the warmest winter of his life. You got to think about that. Colorado. We still think it's cold as hell, but Lane's like, damn, this for t shirt weather, guys. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm sitting in my truck, right? Like, and it's oh, not yeah. running. Shit, it's nice out. <laughs> I, don't know. Yeah, it's, I don't know. Yeah, you said it was. The sun's out, it's good, you know? Anytime the sun's out. Yeah, so it's it good. was. I swear. Yeah, so you said it was negative 20 last night. What temperature is it like right now? Right now? I'd have to go in and look, but I'm sure it's in its tens. It doesn't feel too ter terribly cold, but it's, I mean, it's cold. Oh, yeah. That's look at that beautiful view. Dude. Look at that. Look at that beautiful Alaskan view. Wow. Uh, that's, that's why we come to the Gentleman's Bureau, everybody, for this. Yep. The now, amazing. Now, Lane, is that house sided with, like, like clear plastic? Oh, that's just the sunroom on my buddy's I house. I figured, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like I my dad has a... More. I would show you more, but I, I don't have his permission right now, so... Yeah, I get that. <laughs> Got to his privacy. Respect. Yeah. But my dad has his, uh, he has his porch on the south side of his house. Big glass windows. It's probably the same concept, just letting a lot of light in. And then it just keeps it up. Even in the middle of winter, it'll be like 56 degrees in that freaking little room. It's nice. 138. Nice. That's the top in Fahrenheit last summer. No oh, shit. Jeez. Jeez. In the in the room or just outside? In the sunroom. Okay, jeez. That's a lot of That's a lot of heat. <laughs> that's yeah, on it, man. Yep. It got really hot. That's the thing. The sun I mean, our sun is intense during the summer. It's just uh, yeah. Well, it's, it's hot. Been getting, it's been getting worse. I've been following like <clears throat> with uh, you know, climate change. You know, uh, it's it's like being it's hard on your fishing and like the the ice caps and shit. You know what I mean? Like it's so. It's hard to say really what's I you know, dude. I think that our rivers here on the Kenai personally have been overfished, and that's what screwed up our uh, our fishing. But I can definitely see where. So, if you want to talk about some weird like climate change shit. I was in Bethel working for my grand. My grandpa's got like 50 plus rentals in Bethel. And so I go out there and help out with doing stuff with that and go see them, you know, I'll take two weeks and go out there or however long I want, you know, I'll go see them. Yeah. And, uh, the fish, they were all getting strokes and heart attacks and they were dying because the water was so fucking hot that it was killing them. Right. Damn. Wild. That's crazy. Yeah, That's what crazy. happens when the shit starts dying in our rivers because our water's getting too hot, you know? That's that's kind of weird. Yeah, what do you even do? Yeah, and then it gets so hot, the plants won't grow, and we've got no food, and we've, we've got no grain, We've and it's, <clears> yeah, it's going, it'll go downhill fast once it starts. Famine. Yeah. 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 Then we're all going to be some Matthew McConaughey motherfuckers in a spaceship out there dealing with different yeah. dimensions trying to find our kid, right? No. <laughs> Right. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Murph. 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 
<laughs> I love that movie, dude. Oh, no, I love that movie. I thought it was really cool how they took all those different scientific theories and they kind of, they were like, this is how we imagine it. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and that's the yeah. thing, though, because, like, so much of it deals with, 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 like, black holes and, like, going around them. All that stuff is theoretical, but um, one of the nice things about that movie is up until the end, when he falls into the black hole, up until that end, it's theoretically sound, right? So, like, yeah. the actual time dilation of long-distance space travel... That was mathematically sound. It was just when it got to the black hole parts, it was like, this is what we think it's going to be, but yeah. we just don't know what, because it's hard to find them. What pissed me off about the movie is uh, they compared it to The Martian. And they said, oh, The Martian is more scientifically accurate than The Interstellar. And I was like, well, Interstellar was a better fucking movie, so <laughs> suck my dick. You know what I mean? Like, I was just super mad that they, I think DeGrasse Tyson, Neil DeGrasse Tyson was talking about it. And I was like, I don't even care what you have to say, man. That was a good movie. <laughs> well, I actually, I heard him, I heard that same interview with, with Neil deGrasse Tyson. I think it was on Joe Rogan, actually. And he's not wrong. But the fact, the difference is, is that Interstellar deal with stuff that is still theoretical, whereas The Martian yeah. is stuff that we're already planning. You know, it's like already, this is what we're going to do when we get to Mars. Hmm. Hmm. It's just a bit closer potatoes. in our realm of what we're getting Chad, to. Yeah, I feel like Fuck, we know potatoes. You don't have the authority to tell anybody you know the other grass tyson is right or wrong I, that guy is way smarter than you i just feel like you're you're like well he's not wrong it's like well i don't know i'm gonna compare than him? it to like you got interstellar and the martian one of them is taking viking in the other one is growing potato plants they're both right but there have been different universes <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> right oh uh, that's great so well, yeah that true that uh for your i guess your capital is juno right yeah yeah so that's where all those it, assholes meet <laughs> yeah so is it true that like you can't really drive there you have to take a boat or a plane that is accurate i mean yeah. you'd have to build a hell of a vehicle to drive to juno but i mean yeah. somebody could probably do it but i don't live in russia this is alaska <laughs> yeah <laughs> i can only imagine what they have oh lord um, aren't there like a lot of bogs in some areas of Alaska too? What do you consider a bog? And I'll tell you what we like, got. Uh, like it looks like solid ground and then you step on it and you're very far underground quickly. I call it the black death, but yeah, we do got that. It's a, uh, it's kind of like tundra. It's like a version of swamp tundra and, uh, like out in Bethel, if you walk in the tundra, you're going to be replacing your laces because it's so acidic. It, it eats your laces off of the uh, boots, you know? So you got to wow. wear like actual mud boots and shit. You don't want yeah, anything like with laces. Yeah. Huh. That's wild. Just the laces though, not the rest of the shoe? Yeah, you don't fucking find bodies in the tundra that have been there for hundreds of years. Jesus. It just eats them. <sighs> Damn. Yeah, yeah, it'll eat you. I mean, think about it. Think about it. Think about it. It lives in the Arctic, and it grows on ice. What the fuck? Like, tundra is intense. Like, and uh, it'll absorb everything that it touches, and it's going to fucking eat you. So, yeah. Uh, what happened to John? Oh, he got ate by the forest. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's crazy. Uh, also, I mean, you got those... Uh, what, what's Alaska have that I want to talk to you about? The swamp donkeys, you call them. The mooses, yeah, man. Moose? Yeah. That, how big of a problem is that with like the roads and oh my god. Yeah, I remember you were uh, you were I'm not showing... even kidding you. I think that there's one still laying in the woods over here. Hang on. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Holy shit. It just got way cooler. Yeah, guys, I'll tell you yeah, a little quick they're thing. Just fucking everywhere. <laughs> yeah, he was like every other week or something. You guys know how to moves. turn I don't know how to turn a camera around. So, we're just going to oh. do this. There you go. Okay. Can I? Yeah, there you go. No. Oh wait, it. there we go. Turn yeah, we can do it like that. Sorry, my amateur camera moves here. How can I zoom in on him? Uh, maybe just just pinch in and spread your fingers apart. I don't know. Oh man, I can't. Skype, you know. Uh, just get closer to it. <laughs> I don't think I can no, get closer to it. Bad idea. Italy will spook and run off. And then, or it'll... And then oh, Lane there's no way to tell. Okay, if you look at the, 
if you look at the little windmill that's right there and right above it, there's a giant brown like oh yeah piece in the tree. I, oh, that, that's a moose. Just to the right of the tree, right? Just to the right of that little tree? Yeah. Yep, that's a moose. Yeah. yeah. I thought that was the windmill, but okay. I have no idea yeah. where the windmill is. It's, yep. It's it's, uh, it's back there. There's no way that I can show you guys. Yeah. I'm sorry. I don't. I, no, it no, just, that's okay. Yep. You see it. I it's okay. It. Uh, wow. So, and they're huge, aren't they? Yes. There we go. Yes. Yeah. Um, they're... So the first, the first moose that I ever got was when I was nine years old, right? This guy called up my dad and he's like, hey, we got a roadkill and we wanted to, uh, you know, you guys want to come help? And so it was like three in the morning. My dad woke me up <laughs> and he says, hey, get your boots on. We got to go get our moose off the road. So we drive down probably, I don't know, like. 10 miles from where we lived and there's the troopers and the busted ass car and this moose and I'm nine and dad hands me a knife and they just start cutting it up. And anyways, it was, it was kind of, it was kind of sketchy, but it was like, Oh, cool. So the guy that we're cutting help with, we get it all cut up. He's got his hacksaw cutting off the moose knuckles and the joints and getting it all just so we can put it in the back of the truck. He looks over and he says, now wouldn't it just be kind of weird if that thing got up and kicked at you? As a nine-year-old, it scared the shit out of me. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yep. I remember so, one guy taken out in front of your house or whatever. You were filming it for everybody. And, uh, I mean, there was moose fur all over the place or hair or whatever you want to call it. And then yeah. you ended up with a big old moose leg at the end of it. And you're like, hey. Check this out. I can just leave it in the truck. You know, it's like works like a freezer out here in Alaska. Right. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. That's well, awesome. I mean, I didn't have, I didn't get it that night. I just, I mean, <laughs> I got it. And I'll be honest, I was tired and I didn't feel like cleaning a moose leg that night. I was like, you know what? I'm going <laughs> to leave it in the truck. It's like 10 below outside. It's just as good as a freezer. Well, yeah. So, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It I'll works good thing. for, you know, and I used, to, I used to drink, you know, and leave food in the truck or whatever. It's still good the next day. Right, yeah, it's just yeah. like a, yeah, just like a refrigerator. Go. So, Alaska's like the land of political incorrectness. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah so dude, okay, so I, I I had a question. So as far as your laws go, like with hunting and shit, like you just said, like okay, yeah, we hit a we hit a moose or or whatever, and we went out and we cut it up and shit. But like, I've always seen those TV shows, like uh, like Yukon Men, and like all that shit like where they're catching poachers and shit like that like what what is your laws on that like are you good to like just go out and get a moose or do you guys have tags what are you what is the process okay so there's so many moose that get hit on the highway that there's charity services that go and clean up the moose and then we clean the moose and we give the moose to low-income families who need meat and okay. so like, uh, my, my family's, they, I grew up Mormon in the Mormon religion, the Latter-day Saints. And so, um, there's a group of the good old boys in the, in the church here in town that, uh, we'd go and get moose. And that's one of the guys that called up my dad when I was a kid. And so I'd never lost contact with those people. I just kind of keep up with them. And if, if I tell them, you know, if you guys hit a moose and it's out by my house, call me up and I'll bring my knives and we'll help you cut it up and get it off the road. So when somebody hits a moose, they have to call the troopers. Okay. Have to. And it's against the law to have spikes on your bumpers for this reason, too. Because if you kill a moose yeah. with a vehicle, I'm pretty sure they can use it in court like a weapon and take right. and seize right. your vehicle. So, yeah. yeah. Um, That's what the show was. Alaska State <laughs> anyways, State so, <laughs> yeah, you have to have a hunting license. And there's a season for it. I mean, moose hunting is really specific. You have to know how many i don't moose hunt because i get so much of it road killing you know i help people out who do the charity so i get enough moose meat for myself helping other people get moose meat um because they're gonna die either way i mean down south when i lived down there i was like holy shit there's deer everywhere why the hell doesn't someone clean these things up i mean it's a waste of meat like <laughs> i yeah. get you 
Yeah. No, it's oh, stupid. It I mean, you just, it, you, you, it's, it's teaching people to, I don't know, you just, it's a disrespect to life and, you know, a way of life. You know, you got to, you got to take care of the earth and where we live or else it's going to fuck us. You know what I mean? Like, right. you ever See, watch like, The Happening? <laughs> <laughs> well actually so, that, that that hotel is not far from uh oh the happening never mind i'm drunk <laughs> i was thinking of the shining we have that, that the hotel. shining <laughs> we have that hotel uh not too far from here jed i'll take you when you come here i'll take you to oh that sweet hotel. dude that sounds awesome i should yeah. probably watch the shining oh, fuck oh, you, you dude. son of a bitch you're such i a keep bitch. meaning to i just haven't like sat down and done it what was the name of the other shining movie the doctor something right with uh oh maybe i'm super wrong let's see it just came out it had uh obi-wan kenobi in it what's that actor's name oh you want mcgregor, McGregor. oh yeah that guy what uh oh you're talking about dude fuck i wanted to see it and he's I the did... kid when he grew up like yeah, and i didn't see it i know what you're talking about but here oh, i'm pulling awesome. up his imdb hold on <laughs> he, it was a recent <laughs> film yeah yeah and i wanted to it was see good. it was... dr strange not dr strange it was no, something but it else was, but it was dr but it was sleep like... yes dr sleep. sleep there you sleep. go that's kind of like dr strange and sleep did you so did you see it lane oh, yeah i own it was it fucking good i i bought it oh fuck yeah dude, I got it was it. good enough to i buy didn't it. even like torrent it or steal it you know what i mean like i i i, I paid money for that right one. <laughs> Yeah, I'll do that sometimes too. Where I'll like, I'll find the movie and watch it, and be like, you know what, this is actually really good. I'm just gonna buy this one, so I don't have to do yeah. this in the future. Donnie Darko, prime example. Donnie Darko is a great one. Fuck yeah, dude! That's great movie. Um, one thing I was gonna ask before we get off the topic of moose, I know that Downey, like where we're from, anytime like a deer gets hit by the car, we generally don't worry about like getting its meat because the organs busted up. Like it gets like it gets all the meat gets spoiled anyway. Is that like less of a problem with moose because they're so big or, or what? Yeah, it must be. I mean, I they, it didn't make any sense to me, but that cleared up that question for me. That makes a whole lot more sense. I mean, and and you got to realize we have like there's the Sterling Highway, the Seward Highway. The oh, man, those are the only two highways that I deal with. <laughs> yeah. Ster, I mean, the Sterling Highway is what goes through the Kenai Peninsula. And then it hooks up to the Seward Highway, and that goes up to Anchorage. And to be honest with you, I haven't really spent a whole lot of time on any other highway other than those two highways my whole life. Wild. Yeah. Well, Jed, <laughs> I think there's two different types of people where we're from. So not to get it confused with what you said, but whenever someone would hit a deer, there's a certain type of person that would be like, sweet, like exactly what Lane does. Like, sweet, thanks, I'll be out there. I'm gonna go grab the meat because some meat is still preservable. Like oh, I've yeah. done three or four different trips <clears> where <throat> there's you know a deer, a dead deer, and we're all excited. We're like, "Fuck yeah, dude!" And we'll go out there and we'll get it, and we just have to tell the cops, "Hey, we're taking the, we're taking the deer." So and I mean, it beats the hell out of going to the the you know shelter and getting them abandoned kittens to make homeless stew. You know, you just feed <laughs> right? deer meat. Right there, you go. Jesus. I don't yeah, know. I, think... I don't understand why we do these things. We're gonna yeah. put them to sleep. Yeah, right. right. They're feeding right. elementary kids kitten. Oh Jesus! <laughs> uh, yeah, I remember. I remember back in the day, there was a a beautiful big ass fucking deer that got smoked out by my house, and uh, some farmer was like, "I don't really want anything else," so he just took the head and mounted it. He left what a it bitch. headless just sitting out in the middle Come of the That's the field. You don't, mount, because, oh, you don't wow. mount heads you didn't take, man. You didn't shoot. Yeah, that's it. Like, that's disrespectful. Like, if I saw that. <laughs> you didn't earn that trophy. He told me that story. I'd be like, all right, man, give me a beer for the road. I'm out. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I, I totally <laughs> forgot why I brought up highways. You guys go a lot faster on your highways. So we can't go that fast here. Everything's 55 miles an hour. So. Oh, yeah. You hit a moose at 55 miles an hour, you might kill it, depending on how you hit it. There's a lot of people that hit moose, and it just fucks their car up, and the moose are like, holy shit, that hurt, and they walk along their fucking moose life. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, Deer dude, probably get obliterated at like 85 miles an hour by a lot oh, of yeah. Big time. Yeah, if, if you want to see something kind of gross, uh, 
warning to our viewers, just Google semi-truck deer and you'll find videos of semi-trucks hitting deer at like 80 miles an hour. There's no deer left. No. And there's just a big red spot on the highway and the guy needs to wash his truck. It's ridiculous. They explode. Yeah. Well, so, Lane, do you have a problem? Or do you guys... So you get a lot of tourists, I can imagine. So mm-hmm. do you have a problem? Well, not you, but like, is there a problem generally with tourists coming here and not really recognizing like the 55 is 55? Like, because over here, you know, we have 55 posted, but shit, we're, we're, go- we're still going 80. You know, no one cares, you know, blend in with traffic. But do, so do you have a problem or is there a problem? With a I, I, you know, that leads to another problem we have. And I love law enforcement and I know where we need it in our life. But the Kenai Peninsula, in my opinion, has way too many different law officials. We have troopers, city cops, federal marshals occasionally, federal wildlife officers, um, and then occasionally military stuff. You know, I'm sure that they're down here. But there's a lot. I mean, there's a lot of cops in this area. So people don't really haul ass. Um, You can't really haul ass. There's too many curves. We don't have straight interstates. You know what I mean? There's more trees than people here. There's, I mean, look, see, trees. There's more trees than people. They're they're just, there's more animals than people. There's, you're not going to haul ass down the road because if a moose steps out in front of you, you're going to die. Right. Yeah. So, like, in relation to a normal-sized truck, where is that, was that moose's head going to be? My head, and I'm like 5'7", is at their shoulder. Like oh. the top of their shoulder? Yeah. I mean, I can look over them, but they can sit their, you know, neck up yeah. and get real tall. But, yeah, they're huge. I mean, that moose quarter I had in my truck, the leg, so from, like, the moose knuckle down to the bottom and then the the oh the shoulder blade was up towards the the top of this chair in the truck the head yeah, just took the whole thing up yeah yeah and that was a wow. small moose yeah so about the size of a big clad like a normal size clydesdale yeah yeah clydesdale are pretty big but yeah moose are pretty big they're a different sized animal but I yeah, think all Clydesdales, you can say that a Clydesdale is the same size as a moose. You know, they're 2,500 pounds. I've seen, yeah. I've seen uh, moose that are as tall as Clydesdale, Jed. Yeah, so. there's some massive, massive yeah. animals up here. So the most common thing you see <clears throat> is the moose. Um, but something the Kenai River is really known for is the Kenai King Salmon, right? That's the world's largest salmon that was ever caught. And uh, I think... Les, Les Anderson caught it in, oh, I want to, it was nine eighty six, I think. And it was a really big salmon, it was like 93 pounds. Google Holy man's going to look it up. Shit. Les Anderson. Google man's. Jamie, get on that, Jamie. Look that up. <laughs> Can you confirm that? <laughs> Let's there see if go. I was right. 86, was that right? May 17th, 1985. Yeah, close, close. Age 68. Oh, he's an old boy. Seven pounds, four ounces. This How much? Is holding this fish. 97 pounds, four ounces. This guy's yeah. holding this fish like this, and it's hanging over. <laughs> he's like leaning back from the weight. It's a big fish. I'll put a picture in the, in the video yeah. somewhere. Sure. This yeah. is crazy. So at the at the Kenai River visitor visitor center, the fisher center, the visitor center up there, they have a wood carving deal of him holding this fish. And um, but yeah, I think that the fish probably weighed a little more because the story goes that he had it sitting in the back of his truck all day long, and so it probably did weigh more because there's a lot of slime and shit that comes out of those fish. I mean, yeah, they just like lose some water as they sit out. Probably a good hundred pounds, maybe a little bit more. Probably. And back then, those fish were massive. I mean, that was the 80s when fishing was crazy. I mean, and they let them take a lot of fish out of the river. And it just, I mean, in the 80s and the 90s, is yeah, that's when they kind of, they fucked up. They you fucked up with the they, fish uh, industry here. And, yeah. You think they overfished it? Oh, no, there's no thinking about it. They most yeah. definitely 100% overfished it. And that's why we have such stringent regulations nowadays. You know, yep. 
Right. And the Kenai King Salmon, this doesn't come up the river. It doesn't come up the King. And, and, you know, there's, there's a lot of controversy about different fishing, um, fisheries in Alaska. One of them is the cook inlet set nets and, you know, the set nets, they're, they're the set net is a, a net that's from the beach out in the inlet and all the fish that are swimming up to the rivers, they go along that inlet, along that, whatever it is, a 200 feet or maybe more or less. I'm, I'm not hundred percent sure, but these set nets get thrown out there and it catches everything that goes through. And so they're yeah. only looking to catch the sockeye, the red salmon or, or whatever is in season, but the Kings get caught in it. And I mean, it just, it just kills them. Everything that caught in a gill net dies. I mean, I think they would have like a, a ratio, like, uh, if we catch so many kings, we're gonna release them back in so they can repopulate, and you know what I mean, like. Like, dude, there's too many chiefs. There's too many chiefs. There, there's just there's so many people that have their idea on how to fix the issue, and what needs to happen is they need to stop commercial and sport fishing for like 20 years and just let it kind of come back, or at least try to come back. They need to take a break from it, but <clears throat> you can't do that. There's people who have lived their lives and brought up generations on the river i mean there right. is just you wouldn't be able to do that to this area it would turn into nothing but um oil you know it'd just be an oil field type place well there's a lot of nature there's a lot of places you can you know get an airplane and go see something you you've never seen and probably no other humans ever seen you know what i mean yeah. like I've flown over glaciers and shit and been like, man, I'm 20 foot above a piece of ice that no human has ever touched, you know? Right. That's That's, crazy. that's kind of a cool, cool feeling. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> so with the, I guess with the upper area, I mean, so there's kind of a, so the word Eskimo, right? That's kind of like the Not a good word. One. That's like the N word, right? It's like, they're supposed to be called Inuit. Right. Yeah, or do you deal with that at all? I or... call the I I call the Alaskan Native people Alaskan Natives. They're 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 okay. they're an American Indian. I mean they are, and they're Alaskan Natives. That's what I call them. And I I don't feel like that's a derogatory term because that's on like tax forms and shit, right? right. Like that's yeah. how the government calls them. They're you're an Alaskan Native, or you're you are not. The government calls them that, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, racist.org yeah, or dot gov. I don't know. I, I'm not going to tell you <laughs> what with some it. people call them, but yeah, there's, <laughs> there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of words for white guy out there that you know. There's, it's, I don't know. That's true. The thing about it is, we're all white skeletons underneath whatever fucking color our pigment happens to be. So yeah, we shouldn't be assholes about it. But the truth about it is, there's a lot of people who are raised to be assholes about it, and that sucks because. The only way racism's kind of passed along is through generations. It's taught. It's not. It is. Yeah, I mean, because truly, I mean, it, yeah. it, it, I don't know. That's an argument you could have with a lot of different people that you know you probably don't even want to be talking to because you know <laughs> if you think They're racism's not cool, you just get out of here. Fuck you. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I just uh, I just I think... seen something about the Alaskan, you know. The Eskimo Inuit. Kind I've of heard native. a lot of people call Eskimo. I've heard them say Inuit. There's Athabasca. So Inuit is the type of native Alaskan. So there's Inuits, there's Yupik, there's Athabascan, there's Clinkit, there's um Aleuts. So it's just the it's like there's Cherokee, there's well, wow, that's the only Native American I guess Sioux, Blackfoot. Blackfoot. Black, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's just a it's yeah. like that that uh Man, I don't know what word to use here to not sound like an asshole. It's their group. You know what I mean? Yeah, like the yeah. northern. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That so like Alaskan kind of Native is like... more encompassing than just Inuit. I get you. Yeah. yeah. But, but like, I'm not even that. A Native guy from Barrow is going to be an Inuit. And a Native guy from Southeast is probably going to be Clinkett or some whatever. Whatever. Mm. Uh, Tribe. I, I, I'm not sure exactly what the name of their people is down there. I, I might be totally fucking that up too. So but. I guess that that you answered my question because yeah. I was like, basically, like, where did this even? Because I was born on the like the idea or the 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 notion that they were called Eskimos, and I was like, oh, that's 
you know, it's just Eskimo. Like, it's just, that's what I, through movies, through media, that's what I know them to be, you know? And then, like, the the whole Eskimo Inuit thing came, and I was like, I just had a question, like, what, what would you call, each, like, is it just regional? And I think you answered that. It is regional, right? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a regional thing. Um, I, I mean... I wouldn't consider if I walked up and said, you know, the Eskimo guy over there, I wouldn't be referring to him as I would refer, you know, I, well, I don't refer to people as the N word, but as somebody would refer to another individual as the N word, I don't think that they're going to mean it in the same way as, you know, defining another individual. That is just, you know, the Eskimo native guy over there. You know, that's, that's right. something who like you, who watched Balto, who watched these, <laughs> you know, yeah, you right. know, no, seriously. I mean, it's it's not an uncommon Balto. word, right? Yeah, I get it. So, so. I, I looked it up. Um, Eskimo is derived from a Montagnes or Inu word meaning netter of snowshoes, and it says that the people of yeah. Canada and Greenland have long preferred other names. What I heard originally when the whole like Eskimo Inuit debate kind of first came up years ago was that it was like a slang that meant person who eats raw meat or something like that but yeah i have also heard that it's like apparently a little derogatory i don't think it's as bad as the n-word but yeah definitely probably just stick to native alaskans i, I like that <laughs> there you go yeah 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 we call them alaskan natives here that that's i mean they were here before <clears throat> we were so do you that's, do you I have mean, a large population of alaskan natives uh compared to like because in the u.s i think You'd probably have to go out of your way to find a Native American person in the lower forty-eight. Honestly, or what like you'd have to go about? to like a. No, I, I feel like you, you would. Can, like you can, you can, you can find, find the white a, people that have like a little Mark. percentage or whatever. But nah, if you, dude, you, you could, could find go to like, full bloods thirty miles from where you grew up, Mark. Hundred percent. Uh, see, I gotta go and find them. I guess I don't know. Uh, Tiskawa. Just go to Tiskawa, man. I so, don't know, man, that's just the town name. I don't know. The Alaska Alaskan natives, um, a lot of them live like where I'm. What I'm familiar with is the Yukon Kuskokwim Delta, and specifically the Kuskokwim River. So the Kuskokwim River has about sixty villages up and down the river. I don't know how long the river is. Hey, Google man, look up the Lower Kuskokwim uh, Delta. Dude, I Kuskokwim. love it. K U S K or K A U K U S Q you quim <laughs> yeah google man i, think. I love it you don't have <laughs> i love it name. Yeah. look up bethel yeah. alaska you'll find the river that it's on that's the river <laughs> oh man that's it google so man. there's 60 there's about 60 villages up and down that river and that river freezes over in the winter time and it's used as an ice highway and so people will bring up uh, fuel and goods up and down that highway so Back in the 70s ice and 80s. My, <laughs> no. Fuck ice road truckers. Those guys are a bunch of fucking weirdos. No. Any, <laughs> any Alaskan TV show or Discovery Channel paid whatever the fuck Alaskan thing, don't believe it. It's not okay. true. It's a bunch of bullshit. It's okay. just, are you telling me that that family that might have been attacked by the government and the kid runs around on all fours rolling around in mud is fake? What? <laughs> what are you talking about, Mark? There's this weird show. Like I, oh God, I don't even remember what it was called. It was some dude and and his and uh, his sons are all fucking weirdos. <laughs> and uh, like the youngest rolls around on all like he rolls around in the mud. Uh, they call him Bear, I think, or something. And he howls at the moon like he's a fucking freak. <laughs> I was like. Oh my God! <laughs> what what is this when guy? You fucking try growing magic mushrooms for the first time, and you test it out on your kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez. Yeah. All yeah. Right. That's some bad fungus. <laughs> Jesus Christ! That's some. It's a weird one. I gotta figure out which one it was, but yeah. Oh my God! Those shows hey, get so man, ridiculous. Yeah. So the Kuskokwim River length seven hundred and two miles. There you go. So, yeah, what about, uh, you said you're up by, like, the Yukon. What about, like, all those gold shows? Isn't there, isn't there, like, a lot of gold in Alaska? You know what? I've never been up to those parts of Alaska. There is a lot of gold in Alaska. 
Definitely. Damn. He's Damn. Like, dripping. I've been there, but, you know, dripping. I'm wearing all the gold there is. So. Yeah. No. And, and, I mean, I, yeah, fuck it. I was born here. I'm an Alaskan. I wear gold every day and everywhere I go. Fuck it. I don't care. Is that um, uh, usual? Like, for, is that like the norm? It's an old school thing. My grandpa, he always wears his gold watch everywhere he goes. And he, every time I ever watched him working, Growing up, my grandfather wore his gold watch and his gold jewelry, and I got dents and shit in my gold nuggets from slamming my hand on two by fours and plywood and hammers and nails because I work in my shit. You know what I mean? It's just like a, it's a level of class that all people have lost. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> why is Alaska so cool, guys? It's Dude, I there. Know, right? I just want to go there now. Yeah. This is going to be great. Well, that's the goal. What I want to do is turn my, I got like, it's either 15 or 13 acres. I can't remember how much it is, but it's one of those two numbers. I got dyslexia like a fucking motherfucker. And uh, anyways, I want to build a bunch of cabins and meet people online and bring them up to Alaska. And uh, that's kind of what I want to do. And this is actually the first time I've ever going to be on YouTube, but I plan on making a YouTube channel. And uh you know, kind of doing that. That I, I feel like I uh, I could meet some pretty neat people across the waves of the internet and uh, bring them all yeah. here. You know what I mean? For sure, man. Yeah, it'd be cool. Show you them the, the place first, you you love, right? You and get your first three people. So <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, man, as soon as you get those cabins <laughs> built up, man, you let us know. We'll come up. Well, know. look, I'll yeah. get mine done. You guys can come up. That'd be rad. Mark already yeah. talked about it. I just met two other fucking dudes that I'm gonna, you know, got the. Yeah. Do you guys smoke marijuana? Well, wait. Is it legal where you're at? It's legal where oh. you're at. I know Mark isn't, but you, Jed. No, it's uh, it's not legal in Wisconsin. They're they're talking about it, but the Republicans keep giving them fucking hassles about like not listen, legalizing the drug. And listen, it's legal. It's so stupid. It's legal if you want it to be. You know what I mean? What yeah, is it? It's up to the you. The Nebraska guy. He said, if you legalize marijuana, it's gonna kill your kids. <laughs> To yeah. date, there has not been a single death associated solely with marijuana. <laughs> I accidentally so, got a squirrel pretty high one time, and it didn't die. So, I mean, <laughs> fuck. There you go. Handle it. Fuck, squirrels hey. die all the time. They're weak as shit. Hey, there you go. little okay. bastard got into my fucking brownies. We were at a picnic getting stoned at the park, and I swear to fuck, dude, it took a brownie, it ate it, and it hung out in the tree. <laughs> And we, I mean, we we're just hanging out, getting stoned at the park. There's nothing better to do on a sunny day. And we watched that squirrel get fucked up. I mean. Awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. fucking hilarious. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty funny. I don't, I don't endorse getting wildlife fucked up. And I think that's illegal. And you shouldn't do that. But, you know, eh, when in Rome. Yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, that, that squirrel stole that brownie. It's on him. Yeah, shit, yeah, it did. Yeah. <laughs> Little thief. Just like the bear kid probably stole the mushrooms, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Oh, yeah. the name of that show was Alaskan Bush People. Yeah, fuck oh. those people. No. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, no. That's Not ridiculous. to be racist, but if you want to talk to Alaska Bush People, they're probably a couple of shades darker than all four of us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. Alaskan natives know what's up. The, the, you want to talk to a person who knows how to live in Alaska? Go out to one of those villages on the Kuskokwim. Those people live hardy lives, but they've been doing it for a very long time. And you got some villages that are that are awesome. They are very progressive, and they're very good, and they're happy-go-lucky places, and they're great. You know, you got positive things that come out of them. And then you got some villages that got drug problems and you know a lot of other problems but mm. um yeah it's just not a really healthy place i think uh i'm on 10 percent on the battery right now so i'm gonna have to go here soon but um alaska's got one of the like highest numbers of uh sex offenders per capita in, in the huh. in this state yeah yeah there's a lot of fucked up shit that happens in those bad villages and there's just not a lot of places in Alaska, so you got to look at the demographics. I mean, there's some fucked up people that live out in the middle of nowhere, and they're out there for a reason. But there's also a lot of fucked up people that are our neighbors, too. So they're out there. Yeah. The cool thing about the state of Alaska is you got to, 
I mean, if you're a sex offender, there's a sex offender registry that you. I mean, that's everywhere. To... Right. Oh, it is. Yeah. That's everywhere. Perfect. Yeah, that's great. everywhere. In fact, in a lot of places, if you move in and you're a sex offender, you are legally required to go to your neighbors and say, hi, my name is so-and-so and I'm a sex offender. I'm moving in right here. Here's my address. And uh, here's my parole <laughs> officer or like whatever they got going on. I think they always have a contact they have to keep in touch with, make sure they're not reoffending. It's It's a big process. Yeah. Good. Fuck those people. Those people <laughs> shouldn't fucking breathe. I don't really agree with a whole lot of political stances on things, but... There's one thing that I hope that I can always agree with everybody on, and that is you shouldn't be a sex offender or a pedophile, and those people don't have a place in my life, really. I don't. Yeah. It just. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Nah. Yep. Yeah. Hey, uh, real quick, before you go, I wanted one. I had one more question for you. What's up, man? So uh, the whole, like, apparently the government will pay you, and I want to say it's based on oil. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So there's a fund that they pay all of us out of if we sign up for it. You're a resident for a year. You've been here for a year. Um, you have to show proof of residence, and it's whatever the dividend happens to be that year. I think last year, well, you know what? I don't know what it was last year. I haven't gotten one in the last couple of years because I just haven't gotten it. I, you know, I don't really like taking free money, so I just haven't taken it. But that's my decision, and that's what a lot. Of, I mean, you can. There's a pick, pick, click, and give, so you can like give your PFD out to other, you know, corporations and shit that have these. You know, we want your money too. You know, those kinds. So I mean, I think it's a like a fund that's set up with stocks or something like that. And this yeah. sounds really bad as an Alaskan, but I, I honestly don't know how it completely works. You know what I mean? They didn't teach us some shit in school, which seems a little they, fucked uh, up. Why would they teach yeah. you how it works? <laughs> or yeah. how like do taxes or what herpes looks like. You know what I mean? The important shit. In <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That I'm having flashbacks to <laughs> important. Fucking... <laughs> Junior high health class. Oh God! Oh, they yeah. showed yeah, us. We had, we had a teacher. Looked like yeah, we had a. Yeah, he teacher showed us. Made man. sure. He made sure I, you all were scared. <laughs> no, the fucking. No, we had a sex ed teacher. She was a lesbian, and it was okay, right? So like, I was like, "Hey, do you care what pictures I use in the slideshow?" Gee, <laughs> ah, oh, there you man. go. I fucking scarred some young minds. I'll tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is great. While we're on the topic, what's green in each nuts? Anybody? What's green? Uh, green Gonorrhea. Each... Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck. Uh, fuck. <laughs> Shit. Fuck. But I like that. Okay. Hey, guys, my phone's going to die. I'm going to get out of here, but it was great talking with you all. Lane, Jed, Mark. Awesome. All right. We'll put your contacts uh, for your Instagram in the uh, bottom of the video or everything. All that right. Would be wonderful, yep. man. I appreciate that. Yeah, Instagram's where yeah, to get a hold of we'll me do. at. And yep, we'll have you back on whenever you start your channel, okay? Yeah. Fucking yep, yep. right. We're gonna get you get, 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 get you guys up here to Alaska Sunday and do some uh, shenanigans. So. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right yeah, then. All right. Later, guys. Later. All right, everybody. Later. Thanks for joining Bye. us.